So yeah, over the years, we've definitely taken a look at a lot of x86-based single-board computers, but this one definitely takes the cake. I mean, I've never seen Cyberpunk 2077 run like this on an SBC. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a seriously powerful single board computer from ASRock. Now this is actually powered by a Ryzen 7000 series APU and recently they released a few new mini PCs, the 4x4 line, and when they released these they also released their single board computers and if you head over to the website you can see exactly what I'm talking about here. So from their main ASRock industrial website, if we head over to their products we can see um, single board computer, the 4x4 line, they also offer a NUC line, but as you can see, we've got the 4x4 7735U, the 4x4 7535U, or the D5, all the way down to the 2000 series embedded APUs from AMD. These boards aren't exactly an SBC because we do need to add storage and RAM. Basically what we have here is the uh, main board from their mini PCs. So you can pick this up without a case and everything, and usually you can find these on eBay for a little cheaper, but they're made for industrial applications. But that doesn't mean we can't use this as our main PC for gaming, emulation, or even a media playback device. And with the specs that this thing's rocking, we can definitely get some AAA gaming out of the way on this SBC. This does support SODIMM DDR5, and I've got 16 gigabytes here. This did come bare bones, and I had to add the RAM plus storage. It utilizes an M.2 NVMe SSD. And around back here, if you want to call it the back, we've got two Ethernet ports, a single gig and a 2.5 gig, two USB 2.0 ports, full-size HDMI and a full-size display port. And moving around to the front here, we've got two USB 4 ports. These will support display out, so we can do a total of four monitors connected to this unit. Plus, we've got a single full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 port up here and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Since this came bare bones, I did have to add RAM. I went with 16 gigabytes of ADATA RAM, so we've got two 8 gig sticks running in dual channel, and it's running at 4800 megahertz. Like I mentioned, this is so dim DDR5. And when it comes to storage, I just opted to use a cheaper Kingston 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD. But once it's all together, we've got a very compact little design here. Now, one thing I wish that was kind of sent along with it were some standoffs. Now, if you don't have a pack of these, I'll leave a link in the description. You definitely need to pick these up if you do anything with uh, single board computers or any kind of electronics at all. They come in handy for all kinds of applications. And right here, we've just got plastic standoffs, so I can actually set this up as feet on this unit. And another thing I like to do with these SBCs is kind of set it up in the vertical orientation. We'll take a look at that in a second. But I just threw four feet on this to kind of keep it up off the table. And to power this unit, I've got a 120 watt power supply. It runs on 19 volts, and this should be plenty for that Ryzen 7000 series APU. So when it comes down to it, basically what we have here is the AMD Ryzen 7 7735U. It's based on Zen 3 Plus. We've got 8 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 2.7 with a boost up to 4.75. A little higher clock than the 6800U. When it comes to integrated graphics, we've got the Radeon 680M. It's based on RDNA 2 with 12 CUs at 2200 MHz. I've got 16 gigabytes of DDR5 running at 4800 megahertz, but this will support up to 64 gigabytes. It does support one PCIe 4.0 M.2 SSD, and I've got a 3.0 drive in here. It's that Kingston 500 gigabyte, just a cheaper drive, but it works out really well. For the operating system, we're going to be running Windows 11 Pro. This should perform very similarly to their 4x4 mini PC because we've basically got the same main board here. Now from the BIOS, we do need to enable performance mode in order for this to go up to 40 watts. It actually does boost up to 50 and then come right back down to around 42, so uh, we can send a lot of power to that GPU and CPU. Overall, very snappy system. Head over to ASRock Industrial, the single board computer section. As you can see, everything loads up really quickly. And their 4x4 line is going to be powered by AMD. If you're looking for a similar board with an uh, Intel CPU, check out their NUC line. They've got new 13th gen units on the market right now, and they are really powerful in the CPU department. But if you're looking for a good GPU performance, I would definitely go with their Ryzen line. 4K video playback is great on these chips here, and it only pulls around 13 watts with 4K 60 playback. We're also using HDR here. I've got my monitor set at 120 hertz, and the next thing I did was just run a few benchmarks to see how this thing's really performing. And first up, Geekbench 6, coming in with a single core of 1978, multi 9084. 
If we could throw a little more wattage at this, we could definitely up both of these scores, but at 40 watts, it's not looking bad at all. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark, I went with Wildlife just to test out this iGPU's Vulkan performance. We get a total score of 13,036. And the final one here is Night Raid with a 25,398. Now, with the RAM here, if we could overclock it, we'd get much better out of this iGPU. Really wish we had a setting, and uh, I've looked everywhere for it, but we're kind of stuck right there at 4800 megahertz. If I could throw 5600 in here, we could up this by about 5000 points, and it really does make a huge difference. But either way, even with this RAM running at 4800 megahertz, we can still get some AAA gaming out of the way on this SVC, so let's go ahead and check that out. And the first one here is Dirt 5 at 720p with a medium low mix. We're actually getting an average of 81 FPS, looking really good. I wish we could go up to 1080 and get that steady 60, but unfortunately you do have to drop it down to very low at 1080 on these iGPUs. It's just a harder one to run. But you know, I gotta say for the form factor here and we're only pulling around 42 watts, not bad. GTA 5 has always run really well on these little APUs, especially Ryzen 6000, Ryzen 7000 with the 680M. 1080p, we've got a high normal mix, and we're getting an average of around 80 FPS. So we could go down to just normal across the board there and get an average of around 120. If I threw a little more wattage at it, we could definitely up the frame rate here, but you know, on a board like this, running these games just locked at 60 is totally fine with me. And locked at 60, it's only going to pull around 32 watts. Next up, Street Fighter V, 1080p, high settings. We're getting a constant 60 here. When it comes to fighting games on these APUs, it works out really well, even with something like Injustice 2 at medium 1080p. Mortal Kombat 11 with a low medium mix at 1080p will run at 60 just fine. So fighting games are good to go on Ryzen 7000 with these integrated 680M graphics. Spider-Man Miles Morales 720p low settings. Now if you've ever tried to run this on any kind of integrated graphics, you know it can be all over the place. And what I've found here with these uh, 680M iGPUs is set a static GPU clock and a static CPU clock so you can get kind of a steady 60 out of it. I know it sounds a little odd because this GPU does run at 2200 megahertz, but I found a sweet spot at about 1900 megahertz on the GPU and 4 gigahertz on the CPU kind of limits that power from going over, and at 40 watts we can send enough to the CPU and GPU to kind of run this game really smoothly. And finally here, Cyberpunk 2077 900p Steam Deck preset. We're right there at 42 watts. We're getting an average of around 65 FPS out of this game. Got a couple dips coming real close to under 60 given uh, you know, our wattage isn't way up there. And I don't have a static clock on the CPU and GPU, I kind of let it go where it's going to go. It does perform really well with this Steam Deck preset at 900p. Another thing I wanted to take a look at was just total system power consumption, and this is definitely going to pull a lot more power than an ARM-based single board computer, but this definitely needs a lot more power to put out the kind of performance we saw in this video. And at idle, it's pulling around 10 watts, average gaming, 62, and the max burst that I saw out of this while maxing out the CPU and GPU was 79 watts. And CPU temps were great because we really don't have a case obstructing any kind of airflow here. At idle, 39 degrees Celsius, average gaming, 66 degrees Celsius, and in a 10 minute sentiment stress test, we hit 84 degrees Celsius, so it didn't thermal throttle. It's actually set at 95 from the BIOS, but uh, we do have a fan curve that we can mess with from the BIOS if you needed it to spin up a little more and keep it cooler. But since this thing isn't in a case, it does a really good job cooling that APU off. So overall, definitely the best performing SPC that we've seen on the channel, and you know, I kind of expected it to be. It's powered by a Ryzen 7000 series APU. We've got a super small form factor here. These are actually great for projects, but like I mentioned, these were built for industrial applications. Now you can pick these up on eBay and I will leave a few links in the description. If you're interested in learning a little more, I'll leave a link to ASRock's website also. But uh, if there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. I'd love to test out, you know, Linux on this. We could do Steam OS or Manjaro. I personally think it would be awesome to see Steam Deck OS running on this little board, but uh, it's really up to you. So let me know what distro you want to see running on this in the future. I don't mind making another video. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you've got any questions, let me know down below. 
And like always, thanks for watching.